Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another Ten Forward Weekly. Um, hello, my name is Mike. I am also known as Ambassador Kel. I am the community manager, and this is Thomas Maroney, the lead ship and UI artist. Even though I only wrote ship artist down there uh, for Star Trek Online. Hey, Thomas. Hey, go. Mike. How's it going? Uh, good. Good. Yeah. You know, I just like to dis dis discredit some of the work that you do for the game. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone said right on time. Darn right, right on time. Yeah. Definitely didn't just look at the clock and go, oh, God, it's four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so hey, how's everybody doing? I hope you're having a good um, okay. night, day, wherever you are. I hear, that, I hear that it's, uh, you know, 2 a.m. in Europe right now, mm -hmm. so people can't watch the stream and play with us, which is sad, but, you know, who needs sleep, really? Yeah, I mean, um, I haven't had sleep in, like, three weeks, so... <laughs> I mentioned that on Reddit. Everyone got mad at me. <laughs> Why'd they get mad at you? It was, uh, there was a long thing. So people were complaining about the Phoenix box not getting upgraded in a while. And I was mm. like, well, here's what everyone's been doing and how long they've been staying at work. And right. I got a lot of like, well, you should have made it better so that it didn't. It took less time to fix. And I'm like, okay. And you're unprofessional for making those comments. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave this thread now. <laughs> I'm going to go back to doing other things. <laughs> Uh, cool. All right. Well, first of all, we wanted to, uh, well, we're here to have you talk about the new 3D ships, which mm -hmm. are over there on the table where you guys can't see them. Mm -hmm. uh, are they, they're very exciting. Are they, aren't they, aren't they isn't great? It, isn't it fascinating? Why don't we, why don't we start with a control <laughs> okay. by showing yeah. off what you guys have already seen. Um, some of you already may even have these. This is the hand-painted. Focus. It's focused. Okay. Look at that. Look at that focus. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, the hand-painted, uh, 3D ship prints. These are the ones that you can customize. This is the ones that are. 350 plus tax and shipping and all that for the next uh, two days, and then Friday and I go up a little higher. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, if you want one of these, jump on that now, right now. Mm -hmm. Go in the game and buy it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the great news is that we're introducing three new styles, which we'll show off one at a time. This is the so Gameprint basically developed this new tech, tech where they instead of printing in one color and then painting it, they can print uh, the entire ship in different colors. So this is actually, instead of painted, this is a fully printed in the different colors you want for the ship. Um, and you can see it's a little bit different in, okay. Here. Yeah. Here. It looks a little different from, you gotta hold that up higher, uh, <laughs> from the, uh, the hand painted model, although on stream not as much, so that's nice. It's a little bit brighter, um, but it still looks fantastic. Uh, it's a really, really cool model. Uh, this one, Remind me how much this one is, Thomas. This is uh, three hundred, right? Two ninety nine. Yeah, I think three hundred for one of these. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, um, so this is one of the ones that's going to go on sale on Friday, uh, and then uh, we have the new seven inch and four inch models, which people on the forums today. Oops, here we go. Didn't believe were real. Uh, they thought I they <laughs> thought I'd, I'd made up and photoshopped these things. Uh, but no, they are real, They're and real. they can print in this size, and they do look that nice. Mm -hmm. And someone was saying, I don't know if it is on this ship. Uh, can you read the registries and stuff on even the tiniest yeah, ones? Uh, kind really, of. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean, we are. We did make them include things like fleet logos and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And as you customize the ship and your colors and all that, uh, the ships will appear with all of your customization. It's really hard to show off the four inch <laughs> ship. With yeah, your hand. yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about the the process of bringing these new styles to life, Thomas. Um, well, what's awesome is I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we had built the I mean we built our export process to be pretty straightforward, where it just it sort of turns your your ship the way it looks with the materials and the model and the the customized geometry um, into a model that gets packaged to mixed dimensions, and they're the ones who really kind of went through and. Uh, figured out a new process um, that will let them automatically print these uh, these still beautiful uh, models um, in a kind of a much faster turnaround. Yeah. I actually saw the 3D printer, um, uh, well, one of the 3D printers they're using for it. The other day I went to go visit their offices because it's now walking distance from my house, which is amazing. Uh, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> great. They were printing a uh, uh, 12-inch of um, uh, the, um, oh, God, what's it called? Uh, the... the Tal Shiar, uh, the Borg adapted Tal Shiar right, cruiser, yeah, the really yeah. crazy looking one, yeah. uh, which just looked amazing. I'm so excited to see that when it's done. Yeah. yeah. So um, in terms of how these are different, one of the kind of cool things, um, if we look at the, the hand painted model, um, I don't know how many people know this, but part of the process of what Mixed Dimensions does with these is they take your ship and they take the materials of your ship and the ships have a thing called uh, normal maps, which sort of fake depth. 
on a flat texture, they'll make it look like, oh, here's a recessed panel right. line, here are some windows that go into the ship or escape pods that go out of the ship. And Mixed Dimensions um, on the hand-painted model actually creates real physical geometry from that. So basically what they're doing is they're turning your ship, your game resolution model ship, into a high-poly model, right? That has similar levels of detail to maybe like a model from a TV show or whatever. Yeah. So then they print that out, and then they then they paint it. Um, the the flex of the four-inch one, I'm just gonna hold it up while you're talking. Okay, about. yeah. Um, so the different, one of the big differences, um, and why, you know, that, that's a really labor-intensive thing for them to do. Um, so with these, uh, the new, this is the new 12-inch uh, model, and this is pretty much just straight from the game. This is not, they didn't do any sort of smoothing. You can kind of see here um, some of the faces and stuff. Um, but that's why they can do it a lot faster and cheaper. Um, and so, you know, you are, if you are interested in the hand-painted ones, you're still getting a lot of really interesting detail and quality uh, for, you know, if you order one of those models. Um, but, you know, these, these new ones are a really great alternative too. Yeah. Uh, Josh Callen was asking what the price is. Uh, this little guy right here is, starts at twenty bucks. Um, the middle, medium one was one hundred and fifty, I think. No, one hundred. Hundred. Yeah, okay. I think it starts at ninety nine. From yeah, what I, yeah, and then the uh, the the twelve inch one is two ninety nine. Yeah, this will be. Um, and I think believe there is possibly going to be a little bit of, um, especially on the hand painted ones, uh, depending on how tall your ship is. Basically, the price might go up or down. Um, so well, not down, but up. Um, because they have to fit them into the 3D printer, um, but that's uh, we that they'll basically send you a quote when you order a ship, and so you can decide whether or not you want to uh, actually purchase it after that. Uh, if we up the render scale, will you get a bigger ship? No, because that's <laughs> not how the process works. Um, a bunch of people are saying that uh, the D DS9 exterior has broken LODs. I don't know what LODs are. Do you yeah, know what that we're, is? we're we're aware of fixing that. Yeah, we're fixing it. Okay, I just saw like four comments on each side mm -hmm. go by about that, so I wanted to make sure <laughs> it's we address it. We're we're on yeah. it. Uh, hey, Tim. Sorry I called you out on Facebook today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Orangitis says he's glad they brought in Captain Maroney to show off the USS Pathfinder. That's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Which, maybe once Victory's Life comes out, we can go back to doing those streets. Yeah. Yeah, I missed that. that <laughs> yeah, me that, too. That was, was super fun. fun. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, and Tim has said hi on Facebook but responded to my comment on Twitch. My brain is confused. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, can we say how soonish the people who were not able to print their ship because not being able to use Lighting 2.0 can start to do so? Uh, that may be a not thing, right? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the way that um, our ship export process works is we just can't... Uh, the way the headshot system works with Lighting 1.0, it's not really compatible. Um, we're, we can't guarantee the quality of the um, renders of your ship that they use as reference for painting it. So that's why we just had to turn off Lighting 1.0 because we didn't want to send renders to mixed dimensions of your ship that's like too dark yeah, uh, and missing a lot of details. It. So it was, That was one of those things that uh, they, the team made a Herculean effort to try and make it work and just did, did, yeah. it just didn't. Right. Uh, good morning to you too from Germany, Dennis. Uh, let's see. Um, for the four-inch models, how extensive was the testing for prints? Did we test any ships with shim par thin parts, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, they sent us a bunch of prototypes that Thomas looked at and gave feedback to and sent back. Um, you know, it's always going to be a process with these things. There's over 500 ships in the game, so obviously we couldn't have them print them all. Right. Um, but we've taken a look at the process, and we're we're pretty happy with it. I mean, you can see, this is like the finished part of the Pathfinder right here. And that's still pretty pretty hardy and thick. I will say that these are, you probably want to be a little more um, careful when you're whooshing these guys yep. around. They're not made from the same material as the um, hand-painted versions. So um, they uh, just treat them a little more carefully. Um, yeah. But you can still, you can still do whoosh, you know, do that. Yeah. But don't you know? Don't don't actually throw them. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gregory Stitz, what about 3D printed captains? It's something we've talked about. Uh, we actually think that's a cool thing that you guys to get for you guys. But that's you know, we have to see how this works. We've only been doing the first uh, batch with the hand painted ships for about three months now, mm -hmm. uh, and this new these new styles are starting up this week. Um, so we have to kind of see how the response to that works and how everything works out before we expand the line even further. One of the things I'm really excited about, and I I don't know if I'll take this plunge because this is ridiculous but if you guys can imagine you've got your 12 inch ship right and then you've got your 7 inch mm -hmm. ship and then you've got your 4 inch ship 4 inch ship right so if you yeah, think about it in terms this. of uh, Defiance yep. uh, Galaxy and Odyssey you could do some really cool stuff where you actually get kind of a your fleet slightly two size. scale yeah. uh, fleet so chat was talking about that earlier yeah yeah 
Uh, do all sizes come with stands? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Um, I actually don't know that for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't actually know that either. We should sure. find out. Yeah. I will find out, and I will get back to you. So don't quote him on that, because yeah. maybe no sizes come with stands. Yeah. Curtis Simpkins just started playing this game this week. I love it. Uh, you, I'm glad. Good. Welcome to the game, buddy. Yeah. Uh, you this is a good the time. right week. Yeah. Uh, this is the week to get uh, you know a character up to level 60 so you understand the game. So victory is life. You can just jump right into a Jem'Hadar. <laughs> uh, what about for space stations? I don't think we'll be letting people print space stations. You can, only, you can only export a ship that you can fly. Yeah. Um, it only works through the ship tailor. So a ship that you can get into in the ship tailor, yeah. and then there are the noted exceptions. Those are still in effect. Yep. Uh, some of them were we we might work on fixing one day, but not when Victory's Life is about to come out. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Smutters Twelve says, uh, "Welcome to the game. Don't become a ship addict like me." Uh, no, you can't fly uh, Earth Space Dock. Uh, you can fly Deep Space Nine. Uh, that's, a, that's a thing we're doing. It's going to be the top prize of... No, it's not. You can't fly Deep Space Nine. <laughs> that was just us being great. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, 3D printed Curland here model. Yeah, that would be great too. Mm -hmm. uh, will all the Victory's Life ships be available for this on release? I don't think there's any ships from Victory's Life that we're excluding from this, as far as I know. Right, yeah, no. Every every new playable ship from Victory's Life uh, should be printable. Yeah, so, so if you want to print that new Jump in our carrier, right. so that while you're... And, you know, so print the carrier in 12-inch size. Then print its back attack craft, which you actually can't do because there's no way to do that, uh, in seven inch size. Then print all of the little Jem'Hadar bug ships in four which inch size. You also can't and do because right. <laughs> and then, well, the prints of bug ships just a right, standard. Right. Then put them, array them out on your desk, uh, and print four <laughs> inches of every other pet in the game, and then play the game and summon every pet you can possibly summon, <laughs> and it'll be pretty much your, the experience that I'm going to have in the next week. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, generally, you know, we're, and especially now that we have that 3D printing is a thing in the game, we're going to make sure that, you know, when we make new ships, like, consider, like, uh, make sure that what we're doing means that the new ships we add will be 3D printable. So, yeah. as a rule of thumb, any new ship we add should be printable. I mean, there might be a really good reason that we make a ship, another ship like the Iconians, where there's floating geometry and you wouldn't be able to 3D print those, but yeah. that'll be the exception and not the rule. Yeah. Uh, uh, Harry Holdstock, is the pricing for the 12-inch um, uh, hand-painted starship staying the same? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, it's actually going up um, to about to 550 for starting price, uh, starting on Friday. So if you really want a hand-painted ship, today and tomorrow is the last two days to get it at the 350 price. Uh, can we 3 print th 3D print Thomas and Kel? Hashtag no thanks, Romney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Orangitis, yes. Uh, new players can create a new Gemhadar, uh, as we mentioned a few weeks ago. Um, as soon as you click on it, uh, no matter who you are, it'll just say, hey, you're creating a new endgame character. It, start it starts at the end of the game. You may want to try another character first. Uh, but if you want to and you're brand new to the game, you can certainly start out by playing a Gemhadar. Um, will the Sona Collector be printable and wither without sales? I think in the ship tailor it has, doesn't have sales out, so it probably would just right. be Right, it's not out. printable, though. Oh, it's uh, not? We, okay. It's one of our excluded uh, okay. uh, ships, unfortunately. Um, are the new 3D printed starships colored by the filament of the print? As I understand that question, I think the answer is yes. That's I think so, of, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm not... Um, I, I, I'm not a 3D printing expert. Yeah, I haven't like had too much time to get into the nitty-gritty details of how it works. But I'm pretty sure that, yes, these are, it's, it's sort of um, uh, colored like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> 3D printed foundry missions. Uh, Duncan, you can buy your own 3D printer and do that yourself. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, uh, a lot of people asking about a vomp. That's my bad, but I don't know what that is. That's uh, the Iconian thing. Oh, yeah, okay. we, have, we have no uh, no real way to make those ships printable. Um, I mean, maybe... In the future, you know, um, the best way for us to like look into how to do that is um, get some other ships and, and you know make the initiative popular, and then we can invest more resources in broadening yeah. broadening the uh, the selection. Yeah. But it's if you think if you think about it, like considering there are five hundred ships in the game, yeah, there's and a only, lot of ships. The thirteen only, you can't print. Yeah, yeah, like there are a lot to pick from. So yeah. Um, uh, so Travis Broforce uh, rewind the stream about 10 seconds and get the answer to that question uh, <laughs> uh, Tim Jaron uh, there aren't going to be any fleet bases in the Gamma Quadrant at launch but that's something we might do later uh, Ryoga Habiki yes you will be able to print your Jem'Hadar char character starting right when Victory is Live launches uh, ships or characters C sorry carrier not character Carrier. yes yes yeah, yeah, that yeah. is printable um, and that, that's a cool ship man yeah. like that's gonna yeah. be awesome yeah 
Uh, can you? Th uh, unfortunately, 3D printing is not available on Xbox One or PS4, and won't be for the foreseeable future. Um, it's just a it, there's there's technical hurdles to it that we can't hurdle at this time. Uh, but we're we're we we want to do it maybe someday. Uh, I won't say never, but it's uh, it's not happening anytime soon, unfortunately. Um, and and then through, mixed dimensions is also still interested in selling a selection of ships like that you don't need to go on the tailor to buy. Yeah. Um, so. So Gallon Dugal uh, wants to know that now that we have all the pennants, are we getting a baseball PvP map? Uh, which <laughs> leads, leads me to... More. So one of the most the fun parts of my job, and one of my most fun parts about being friends with Thomas, is watching an idea in Thomas's head go from an idea to an obsession to becoming <laughs> this giant thing that he does on the weekends and in his spare time. Uh, so like this was a, hey, wouldn't it be funny to have DS9 pendants? People send me team names. Maybe I'll do it. Ha ha ha. To like, I'm making 13 teams for each quadrant, and like... <laughs> Here's their stats and their <laughs> players. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, thankfully, I don't know how to make a baseball PvP map. So otherwise you would. <laughs> yeah, so no, that's not going to happen. But, you know, um, we'll see if, if people like the idea of baseball teams. You might, We might do more with that idea in yeah. general. In yeah. the future, so it's a fun uh, idea. Yeah, we should we should. Uh, no, I shouldn't even suggest that because the players will want it. Never mind. I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh. Uh, you're welcome, Ryoga Habiki. I'm glad I could pronounce your name right, Ryoga Habiki. <laughs> I, get it, I get it wrong so often. I want to celebrate the one I got right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can one print ships they don't own? Uh, currently not, because uh, you have to actually be able to put the ship in the ship tailor. There are several workarounds about that that I've heard, though, including the, hey, my friend owns that ship. Uh, let's have them hit the 3D print button and then send me the link to the game print page that pops up, and I can actually sign in and, and print the ship. Hmm. Uh, so that's that's one of the options out there you can do. Um, I find you, you can find ways around it. Console captains can too. Um, just not don't hack the game, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the difference in materials in sizes? So um, this this the hand painted uh, ones that we've been selling for the last couple of months are um, uh, they're that material that we talked about in the AMA that I I've forgotten the name of now. But they're the words. These guys are resin, um, right? Maybe that's. This is this uh, is resin. This might this, be like substrate or something. This is resin. This might be so the problem is that neither of us are like super yeah. experts on three D printing. We probably should have, considering they they work close here now. We probably should have just asked them to come right. and do the stream. Yeah. But, well, yeah. maybe we can do that in later on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the future, um, I think they they definitely um, feel very different. Uh, again, because of how different the process is for the hand painted version, yeah. it does not feel like it's been three D printed. The 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 details on this guy Are and the smoothness crazy. on the hull and everything is it's it just feels like a model that you would buy from you know from like a hobby store or something uh so um and it's a little uh actually lighter but in a good way like it, it still feels solid um but it's not uh it doesn't feel clunky um and then these guys are very clearly like an automate made with an automated process um but they still look great Especially considering the the value yeah. that you're getting from them. Yeah, and they, I mean, the the way we're putting that makes it sound like they look worse. They actually like look really really good. I was mm -hmm. really surprised when I saw these guys. They do look 3D printed, but they look like a really amazing 3D printed model for your desk. Yeah, um, and, and like just, I would feel okay putting them all alongside you know, other it's, models. That it's, I own. Yeah, definitely. You know, they compare favorably, I think, to like a Hot Wheels or like you know a, a thing you would buy from the store that's like um, kind of automatically painted or yeah. whatever. Uh, do you think the ships could be modded to add stuff like LEDs? If you want to do that, yes, absolutely. Uh, that's not something we're going to be selling with these guys anytime soon. But I do think uh, maybe not the four-inch one. Don't don't try to drill into this guy and add an LED. It's not going to work out well for you. But like the twelve-inch one, I can see people who know what they're doing doing right. that. Right. Yeah. A good I mean, time. the challenge there, I think, is that this I think is pretty much solid. I think yeah. this is pretty much a solid thing. So doing that would be harder. Um, you'd have I think you'd have your work cut out for you. Um, but you know, yeah. never, never say never. Uh, World of None. If I start exporting models today, will it be available for smaller models starting Friday? I think so. Uh, I think because just I think just the website is changing. Yeah. So if you just go to it, you should be able to pick a different. Size. Right. I think they'll keep all of your captures. Right. So you can go. You can go to to the the ship tailor, hit the print ship button, and it'll save your. You know, if you're logged into the game print website, it'll save it in your in the my captures section yeah. of the website, and so. Um, yeah, when when these new versions are available, you should just be able to go back to that my capture section and 
and uh, and buy uh, print or whatever you want yeah. from there. Uh, Sweater 12, no, I don't think the Game of Vanguard pa pack is changing. The price is changing on release. Uh, I don't know why we would do that. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the price is going to end up being, I don't think it's going to go up. Um, I, don't, don't, I guess don't quote me on that because I haven't asked anyone, but uh, anyway. Um, will we ever be able to buy 3D printed ships with Zen? I'm going to say probably <laughs> never on that because the money has to go to uh, mixed dimensions and mm. that's a whole process that has to go with uh, for game print I mean um, so um, yeah I don't see that being implemented anytime soon especially because you're actually making the purchase on their website once you uh, once you've um, where it's exported the ship mm -hmm. so um, uh, cow im hin fear goal cow im and fear goal okay uh, any word on seahorse store stock uh, cost for the vanguard packs stay tuned that information is coming soon. Any word on what? See store costs for the Vanguard oh, packs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> take my money. I want those ships now. Yeah, we feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I see Esben uh, Christensen says, would shuttles be 3D printable? And if so, what would the size be? Um, yes, they are 3D printable. Same size. Same size. Yeah. So you would get a, um, you could get a, a shuttle that's seven inches long if you wanted. Um, it would be obviously much more, much thicker, I guess, yeah. and more material, so it might end up costing a bit more. Um, and because than I've the seen this asked before, the seven inch, four inch, and twelve inch distances are the distance to the longest points of the ship. So if it's like a scimitar, that's going to be the distance between the two ends of the two wings. Right, right. Whereas Wingspan. an intrepid is the distance between the front and the back of the ship. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any chance we'll get Victory's life early? No. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. We wish, but no. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, uh, no, the, the Vanguard pack is complete now. We've, we've done all the additions to the Vanguard pack we're going to be doing. Uh, will the Intrepid part get movable parts in the cells? No, because of the 3D printing process, they can't add like hinges or things like that. Um, no. I can see modders doing that, but you know that's a that's a definite breaking your warranty kind of thing. I mean, if you and if you want the Canon Intrepid and you really want them in the cells to move, you can. There are yeah. other ways to get that, but yeah, um, th this is about having your ship in, in Star Trek Online. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Lindley, will there be a sale on Sea Store ships? Yes. We will do that again at some point. We at some point in the future, <laughs> there will be a, will a be sale, sale on, ships. on Sea Store ships. Yes, absolutely. We can pretty, pretty yeah. safely guarantee that will happen. Uh, Lei, I'm going to get this wrong. Lei Hung Wei. Uh, so uh, the answer to what hull material is available for the uh, custom painted uh, is what hull materials are available on your ship. Uh, customize your ship in the tailor and just 3D print it. And Including uh, shield overlays. Yeah, um, which that's how I... I got mine ordered. It's, it's mm -hmm. going to be a Jim Hart ship with a uh, um, Riemann shield, uh, shield overlay. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so Figamus, uh, and I'll answer this question for everybody, uh, if your ship has different configurations, if you can't pull them up in the ship tailor, there's no way to switch it to another configuration at this point. There might be, yeah. And, and I, at some point when I have time, I actually want to R&D the possibility of actually adding a button to the ship tailor that will let you change mode. Change mode. Um, that's theoretically possible for us to do, but it it's not, you know, it, it would take some time for us to figure out. So it could in the possible, you know, it could happen in the future, uh, not right now, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Lucas White, uh, we don't talk about upcoming content on this on this show. Uh, although the, we, we well, let's see, we talk about upcoming content that we've announced, which is why we go deep into Victory of Life on this the last couple right, of right. weeks. But uh, anything else for Victory's Life that we have may or may not have announced yet, uh, we're not going to talk about yet. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, are we going to do the new USS Enterprise from Star Trek Discovery? That is something we definitely want to do. I know you got really excited about that ship. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about upcoming content, whether we're doing Discovery stuff or not. But Man, when Thomas seems, gets excited about ships, it seems like it'd be a really weird choice for a Star Trek game not to include the Enterprise. Right? The it would be a, 15th it, version of that it, particular it would Enterprise. It'd be a weird choice for us not to make that ship. Right? Um. Well, Klingons got a triple pizza. Yes, I don't right. know when, but they will. Are you, so you're, you're just I'm promising. I'm promising. You're committing that. Yes. that. All right. We're gonna at some point in the life of Star Trek Online, Klingons will get a triple pizza. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Ten years from now, the game finally goes into sunset, and people are like, "We never got our pizza." <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, can you guys stop by Massachusetts so you can buy us that damned round? Uh, I am going to Massachusetts this summer. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where, because I don't know who will show up. 
<laughs> I'm just someone banging on my door going, Where's my tier six Vorchuk hell? Where's my triple pizza? <laughs> triple pizza! <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, uh, are the new Gem Hadar ships available for testing? Yes, you can get them on Triple right now. Wait, no, you can't get them on Triple right now. Never mind, I'm lying. No. Uh, I think the the starter ship is, but the rest of them I don't mm -hmm. think are available yet. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, when will we start offering plushy versions of Epos? Uh, we'll get someone right on that. <laughs> I want one. I know, me too. <laughs> My wife makes custom plushies, but I don't think she can make the 3,000 that we'd sell. Right, right. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Uh, Thomas, as someone who is strangely obsessed with the Archon class, where is the bridge? I can't fight it. So just can't pointing out there, it. Captain Senti can't, can't is trying this. to fight his starship bridge. Can't fight this feeling anymore. <laughs> can't fight this feeling <laughs> anymore. Uh, Archon. So um, that's the T6 Sovereign, right? Yeah. Um, when you get Ian Richards on here, ask him because he's the one who worked on okay. that ship. And All right. I, I think. I mean, like, it's with a Federation ship. It seems pretty straightforward to say it's on the top, but I don't know if that's actually like if there's actually a spot on the top for it. <laughs> oh my God! People are taking my ten years comment seriously. I knew I should have made it longer. Uh, Star Trek Online is gonna last another 150 years, guys. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go into space, and uh, we're gonna you're gonna be playing this this on Pluto. Your grandchildren will be playing mm -hmm. this on Pluto. Uh, any word on Riser? Is that considered upcoming content? Stay tuned in the summer event. Obviously, it's launching a little later this year because of uh, Victory's life, but we are doing a summer event. I can tell you that. Um, any idea how the Terran Task Force Vanity Shield looks like a footprint? I haven't seen one of those yet. The only ones I've seen, in, well, the only one I've seen in person is the Zen Cathy Shield, which looked amazing. If you yeah. haven't seen the unboxing video of that ship, uh, go look it up. Um, but I don't think I'll have a So the Terran, Terran Task Force, Force is kind of like a riff on the Intel material. Yeah. For the fat Intel ships. So, uh, and Klingon Intel ships too. So I imagine it'd look pretty cool. It'd probably be pretty dark. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it would look pretty, pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Jeff Dyer says, what bet did you lose to have to wear that shirt today? Uh, I... I did not. I actually. So what's great about this shirt is I actually bought it in Hawaii in a hot topic in Hawaii. Because <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Can people see that it has a little uh, little Boba Fett? Little on Boba Fett. Not that we yeah. know anything about other other star franchises. Definitely didn't go as a company to see a movie last Friday or anything. No, no. Um, the Thomas walked in with the uh, the new haircut and the the collared shirt this morning to the Leeds meeting and we all kind of gave him crap about dressing up for work. <laughs> Which is uh, funny because in most companies you get crap company. yeah in most companies you, if you're wearing a Hawaiian shirt you get crap for not being dressed up enough and we were all like oh somebody's fancy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh, so um, are they fixing how the vanity shields are looking on the new Gemini Dreadnought model? Um, so I don't have, that's the first I've heard of that particular bug, Glitch83, so send me more details, probably on Twitter, and I will look into it. Um, let's see, Smoter12 says he's been to that Hot Topic before. <laughs> I mean, I, I think there's probably more than one. Yeah. This was on Maui, I think. Anyway, yeah. Uh, it's Shreel Abdul Rahman says that a shirt and haircut actually looks really great on you. So, you know, I agree. Thanks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, which dev is responsible for which NPCs to put into the game? Um, all of them hmm. at different points. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure exactly which point you mean. If you're talking about which uh, Star Trek actors we went for, that was uh, a lot of high-level discussions between people like Alan or Kosa. Um, uh, and Maria at the time, I think. Um, if you're talking about, um, like, who creates the characters and decides how they look, that's um, the character team, which is Ian and George. If you're talking about who puts them where, that's the content team. If you're talking about who decides what stats they have, that's the systems team. Uh, and if you're talking about who takes screenshots of them, that's me. <laughs> there you go. That's everybody who works on NPCs mm. in the game. And um, with that, uh, yeah, any other you, ship I, questions? Not, I don't think so. Uh... If, if I was invited to see the studio and showed up in a uniform, would you guys make fun of me? Donnie wears his uniform to work all the time. Uh, I we mean, would that's not an make exaggeration fun. a bit. But, but I mean, come on. <laughs> Donnie has worn his uniform. And well, most yeah. of the response was, holy crap, that's cool. Not like, mm, right, oh, you yeah, nerd. Right, yeah, right. no. This is, this is the kind of environment where you would be welcomed, uh, we, Parker. We might so. point and laugh and then invite you in. And right, you and be like, oh my god, that uniform. You got all the details right. <laughs> uh, all right, well, Thomas, thanks for joining yeah. us. We're switching out with Nick now. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Do you want me to take these away? Yeah, go ahead and take them.
you want to take your your painted ship too, you can. Okay. Don't drop anything for the love of God. Oh God. You can just leave them. I'll just fly them around. <laughs> yeah. Later. All right, come and join us, Mister Dugui. Do good. Do good. Do good. No, no, don't whatever me. I want to get it right. Do good. Do good. Do good. Okay, I got. I'll get it. With an id. Do good. Uh, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Nick to good. Uh, we are here to take a look at your newest addition to your new Deep Space Nine, which is, of course... Top secret. Oh, that's a friend can't request I got. Can't show it. Yep, can't show it at all. I'll, I don't accept friend requests on stream, I'm so sorry. I was accepting them before stream. Uh, it's this window. Uh, it's yep. actually the entirety of what you've done. It is. Oh, I it's suppose just attached to things. the rest of it, too. All right, welcome to the new DS9 Ops, everybody. And yeah, I just was told to show you that. They can get up there. <laughs> I got the I got the Twitter stream. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is um, we. So last time we talked about this, this was a we really like to do it. We're not sure if we're ever gonna have time. So I guess right. the question is, where did you find the time? Uh, <laughs> um, well, we didn't find it in the schedule. We found it on my weekends and late nights. So. Um, about the past two months, I've been staying until nine or ten at night, and then coming in for a few hours every weekend, and and now it's in. <laughs> you're you're a good sleep. Person. We sleep is a good you. thing. Sleep, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so is this also kind of based in the same like you know you had the ship uh, map uh, the sets. And yep. Yep. We have around. a we have a map for. Um, let's see. The main one is stage seventeen. I think this is stage four. Mm -hmm. Had. Uh, operations and the cargo bay and hallways maybe and I can't remember what else something else maybe the ward room yeah. um, and so we have a map of that and again we can go to Paramount and pull the, the dimensions and um, and then build it the same way that we did with everything downstairs so this is the same thing 50% bigger than reality mm -hmm. um, and I excuse me I white boxed it um, Gosh, a long time ago now, and when we thought that we were still, maybe would get to it, and then um, when it was clear that we weren't, I just started moving ahead on that uh, on my own. And <laughs> screw it, I'll do it myself. <laughs> well, it was yeah, it's you know. Yeah. So these are are these all uh, Tim's work here on the yeah. Cars? So this was this was the main thing that Tim has been working on for the last couple of months too. Tim Sarcata uh, Davies, who did all of the. Cardassian Elkar's uh, work, um, and and it did an amazing job on all of that. Yeah, and so, so cool. um, there's a lot of it in here. Operations is the, the heaviest by far, yeah. um, with the infirmary being a pretty close second. And so we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, we have at least five separate large textures, 2048s, uh, or thereabouts, of Elkar's in this room alone. That's so cool. it's a big, it's a big undertaking. He did a yeah. fantastic job and so what was the uh, pretty. What was the hardest part of the room to find screenshots of from the show? Oh god, this room is a pain. Um, it's not that it's hard to find screenshots of things. Uh, well, actually I can tell you exactly where it is. Turn around. Turning around? Yep. Um, the bottom of this console, you guys can't see where my finger is pointing, the bottom of the science console and where it meets the platform and the floor yeah. right there is, I I have yet to find a good screenshot of that. <laughs> so it um, just, this is our best guess right here. Yeah, I, and I know it's not quite right. That the front console of the of the science station is not, is too big and too wide, but then this is the problem with all, with this whole room. Everything is at weird angles, like even more so than all of the promenade. The promenade yeah. is, is actually pretty easy to figure out mostly. This room is a pain. Everything is very strangely put together and built in weird ways. And so even when I had, you know, I, I built and rebuilt some of these things a number of times. And so even when I see something like this console that I know is too big and too wide, I can't, if I make it narrower, then the then it's out of proportion that way, and and the part of it that hooks into the science station on Dax's side isn't the right size and dimensions, and so, like, where do you, how do you fix things if if yeah. fixing it in one place makes it bad in another place, and so you do a lot of that over and over again until you get kind of close. So, 
Is that is that just because of the way like what was it about how they shot it that made things so like hard to match up? It's not how they shot it necessarily. It's it's how they're built. Everything in here is a weird shape. Go look at the engineering consoles. This engineering desk up front is the worst. Um, it's just a big weird shape. There is yeah. no nothing to guide you. There's nothing is on a grid. Nothing is is at ninety degree angles to each other. Um, you know the back side of this was almost never even shown, other than O'Brien's side of it over here on the right. Um, and so you, you know, we have the plans and so I can cut it out according to the plans and extrude it. And then we have kind of a rough shape to go off of, yeah. but, um, but then you start cutting in these panels and okay. So then we, we cut in the, the little L cars panels and well, this one's too wide, but the one next to it is, is also too wide. So that <laughs> means the whole panel is too wide, but if we shrink it, then we can't shrink it because I know that this, uh, distance where the walkway is uh -huh. has to be a certain size and that has to match the other side of the room and so if I shrink it on this side then that side either has to get bigger which would shrink the science console uh, anyway it's just a big it's mess. A lot. It's a lot. So there's a lot of, of reconciling one thing with another and trying to make sure that they all kind of line up and and like I said I, I did my best I know that it's not perfect but um, but I think it's better than what we have. So uh, B Mitchell, nineteen sixty four says Cardassian logic confuse the enemy and your crew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I ugh. man, I I. It's really interesting considering like there are both um, benefits and drawbacks that we have to making this digitally um, compared to what they did. Uh, you know, making it Real actually life, as a yeah. physical thing. Um, you know, part of that is that we're we're just. We're, we're trying to copy them and they were kind of making it up as they went right yeah. they, they had plans to go off of but that was it um but things like uh if you look up at the the front ceiling or the front uh wow, wall mining laser was cool as heck i get that oh, sorry front wall. <laughs> so the front wall has those little boxes and stuff on it or next to the the front doors here right yeah. there this little box you know That's that is cool. something that was just a probably a physical product that they just went down to some store and bought a couple of and they cut them in half and they painted the it and they stuck yeah. it on the wall and that's some work but i have to m manually make every one of those there's nowhere i can just go buy that box and yeah. put it on the wall um obviously there's a lot more that they had to deal with that i don't right i can just make this all in 3d and i can um you know extrude something up and have a console you know essentially built in a couple of minutes right um where they have to actually manufacture it all out of plywood and steel and things like that um did this guy make a character named let me play changeling just to go on the stream i'm sure he did <laughs> uh, is is let me play warda right next to him it's probably gonna be somewhere in here yeah somewhere in here um <laughs> so it, when you're making something like this then is like the white box the hardest stage because you have to no white box. well fit, or? yeah no um <laughs> white boxes is, is generally quick and and pretty easy to get started um it's just that as you go everything shifts and so like there is no point where I thought, okay, well, <laughs> sorry, there are many points where I thought, okay, science station is done. I've got that done. Now I'm going to go work on this thing. And then as soon as you start working on the thing next to it, then it becomes clear that the science station isn't actually done because you have to adjust something or whatever. So it's kind of just the whole way through you're, you're shifting things around a little bit here, you know, by little fractions here and there yeah. uh, until it all kind of takes shape. <laughs> um, it's kind of like making something out of Play-Doh, right? Like you yeah. kind of just make a lump at first and then you kind of pull some arms <laughs> out and then like... So, you, as... you, so there was probably even a time in the last like week or so where you got to this point and then we're like, I need to and do just that desk. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, um, yeah, I can't even remember. Yeah. It, it, we're kind of down to the point now though, where like there just was no option to adjust things. Yeah. Um, I was cutting in the, the panel underneath this desk on the front of the platform uh -huh. and you know again it's too long uh compared to how high it is right but i also can't make it any shorter and so like yeah i guess i could try to adjust something but at this point everything else is kind of in an okay state and so it's better to just let that minor thing be too wide than it is to yeah. try and adjust everything else to fit oh man i just noticed these things down here yeah that that must have been fun to discover well, I mean, that's another thing that there isn't great shots of. There's a couple of good shots of, like, one end or the other, but there isn't anything that kind of shows everything, at yeah. least in my in my reference. Keep in mind that, you know, I only went through however many episodes I went through, and I, I could not capture everything necessarily. Right. So. No, of course. You're not yeah. going to watch all seven seasons. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you are going I, to. I did, but, <laughs> but yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So a lot of, like, this last week has mostly been little trims and stuff. If you look at the transporter behind you, 
Yeah. Um, I kind of did did redid. So I had we have those angle brackets downstairs uh -huh. that are basically what make up the corners of this. Except that all of these are then have to be custom made to fit the space the space a little bit because they're not quite the ones that are downstairs. So we had those in the ones from downstairs for a long time, and then um, just this last week I did that and the like the trim along the floor and. I don't know. Lots of putting those little uh, mandala These things? circles on. Oh, those, yeah. Yeah. This, this, this I love this because like I, this is just like one of those modern texture things that they probably found <laughs> like a Home Depot to put it. Well, yeah, and it's, it's funny too because like you think of diamond plate and you think it's metal, but I'm sh I'm pretty sure that this was rubber. Yeah. Um, because they make that kind well, of. Well, because you don't want it to do like texture. a conk 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 yeah, whenever exactly. somebody's walking around. Second. And it's a lot easier to work with rolled up rubber than it is to work with metal. Yeah. Um. To fit it into weird spaces and odd shapes and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, there's a Mugato. We should send it to Chase. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I was uh, thinking maybe we make maybe we give uh, uh, Mirror Lita, Admiral Lita, a a Mugato for the, for the next time she pops yeah. up in game. That would be fun. Yeah. How crazy was that for you? That whole that was thing. Pretty crazy. And if you guys didn't um, see it, we had a video we put out last week of uh, Nick to giving Chase and Max and. Uh, JG, a tour of Deep Space Nine as he was working on it, which was yeah. one of my funnest things to go through and edit. I told you this in person because, like, for the very first one, you're with JG, you're kind of like, So, this is my space station. It's very nice to meet you, sir. By the time we get to, to Max, you're like, So, this is how everything works. Let me talk to you. Let me ask you some questions. Yeah. Like, you got really comfortable with it over the course of the Yeah. Time. It's, it's also, uh, yeah, I, it, you know, you get better at things as you do them, yeah. do them more. Um, but it's also like, JG was the first one, and everything is so white box in, the, in like what we were showing him. Yeah, that it was kind of like a. It's kind of embarrassing because like, oh, this thing isn't done, and I don't really want to show it to you. But also, I kind of I really want to show it to you. <laughs> yeah, it's not yet. Just not with this. And then, and then also, there's this like kind of creepy stalker thing, especially when it get, comes to Max and Chase, who were on the station more of like. Yeah. So I built this place that you used to work at yeah. all the time. <laughs> I went to your, been, I, I went to your the old yeah, pizza joint where you got right. your first job. I looked up these plans online. <laughs> I, the, you didn't yeah. see this in the video, but uh, I, initially Max thought we had like stolen the plans to this, yeah. the show somehow, <laughs> which was amazing. Uh, yeah, how did you get those? Yeah, they're, they're online. There, there are people. People have made them. People have made me. them officially. I didn't, I didn't steal them. Somebody yeah. else stole them. Yeah. Well, I think there isn't the like Deep Space Nine technical manual or something have the the set plans we worked from. Mm, I thought there was an official know. release of that. There Maybe might not. Uh, there might be. I have a paper set that I got from, I don't know, Larry Nemechek or somebody at some point. Yeah. Um. And so they're out there. They're available. It's just uh, yeah. you know, uh, somebody scanned them. Mima Rangelot yeah. wants to know how far apart the showing was between JG, Max, and Chase. I think JG was the earliest. Yeah. That was before um, uh, before uh. Not Renegades Regret, but the one before that. Because um, uh, we, we had him come in and do that, and we had him do all his victories, life stuff while yeah. he was here. Uh, still so Encryptus. Yeah, still Encryptus, thank yeah. you. And so that was before that, before the anniversary. So Yeah, so it was um, really early. It was really early, and then the Max and Chase were about a week from each other. Yeah, and Max and Chase was second, I think, and then Max yeah, came in last. Yeah, Max, yeah. Um, but yeah, they were, they were significantly apart, and, and, and what we showed Max and Chase is... A while ago now at this point and so um, it'd be cool to show them again yeah now that everything's that been everything's done. done and we did get to show it I wish you'd been here Rose we did get oh, to show wow. it to Iris even Stephen Bear um, which was amazing uh, really really cool experience yeah. uh, at destination Star Trek um, somebody was asking how you get on Tribble uh, in the uh, the Facebook chat um, I can't post the link unfortunately because I don't think Facebook chat lets you do that um, but you can if you just Google uh, literally Star Trek Online how to get on Tribble it'll be like the first result or someone in the chat I'm sure can help you yeah that's cool the Tribble lift moves it makes me happy <laughs> I, I would like them both to move but the problem is that um, if you like that guy who yeah. just came up from the or from the promenade uh, what would happen is he would spawn in and then you'd be in the volume and so then the turbo lift would move up which and would look really to, yeah. dumb so we had to make sure that one of the turbo lifts was up all the time, and that's where you come in, and then the second turbo lift can Go back raise and lower. Um, I always forget the, the Can you still get stuck on it, I'm assuming? I don't know. Don't, well, don't don't try, otherwise you'll get stuck up there. No. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that, that no. fix has gone out yet. So I don't, That doesn't look like I've gotten stuck, though. I think I have to be standing on it. To get yeah, no, no, you have to jump on top of it before okay. it, as it's moving up. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Um, let's see. Um... Uh, 
yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, cool. So, what else should we know about? Operations. What else do um, you if you what look else up, there's windows. Be? People didn't realize that there's windows up there, but there's windows up there, and, <laughs> and they are uh, and and runabouts, uh, and those windows are also the airlock doors uh, and the windows that they use in the habitat ring. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Same ones. Which, that's one of the ways that we do we do scale stuff reasonably, or how we can tell how big stuff is is when they reuse assets like that. Yeah. Because we know that they're the same thing, so then we can like. It, even in the white box stage, I already had the promenade uh, ones at least partially done, so I brought them up here and could use those arrayed around to figure out, you know, how big the circle needed to be and that kind yeah. of stuff. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, me Ranglout wants to know when I'm petitioning the team to add in common rider esque battle gear. Uh, dude, have you seen the Zen Kathy armor? <laughs> it, it's a done. It's over. It's already there. <laughs> uh, will the view screen actually uh, show things? So we could. Uh, but I don't know what we'd show. Like, usually it's, it's, so it's supposed to be, like, somewhat holographic or whatever, right? There, yeah. When it's off, then you can see through it. And I don't know what we'd put up there. We could have it, like, turn on and off periodically, but what would we put up there that would be reasonable? I don't want to just put, like, I could put a static image of the station outside, but that seems kind of boring. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, we can't do anything fancy like actually having somebody hail or something. I... Yeah, it's it's possible, but I don't know what it would be. Maybe maybe what we'll do is whenever or if this ever gets used in a mission, then we'll just do it that way. Um, so we'll have the view screen used then. Oh, someone was asking about Cisco's office, which we haven't actually shown up yet. What is that? You mean, you mean office. Curlin's office? Yeah. Which uh, somebody's sitting in Curlin's chair. Yeah. But Curlin don't care because he's staring off into space. Curlin is obsessed with the Denarius belt. So yeah, it's just his favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, baseball still on the table. It's interesting because I always forget that. Uh, Cisco's office in the show now Kerlin's office is one of the more like sparse areas mm -hmm. like you come from this with like L cars everywhere yeah, yeah. to like there's this kind of plain room there's there's a few like uh, Cisco had a couple of other model spaceships and the, the model international space station and sometimes he had a chair over in this corner yeah. uh, on the left near the near the off wall but not often yeah. Um, I, I assume these are Curlin's decorations then. They are Curlin's decorations, yeah. There's actually a Defiant over on the other side, too. Oh, neat. Um, you were asking what was so hard earlier, what the hardest thing, <laughs> like, that people have found the three yeah. places to sit. Yep. Um, it's a waiting room. The, the harder things to figure out in this, uh, in working on this, and actually the base of Cisco's desk was one of the toughest. There yeah. is, there are, well... A lot of people have modeled Cisco's desk, and a lot of people have done it wrong. Um, and I don't think that I got it 100% necessarily, but um, there's only a couple of shots that even show it. And usually it's totally in shadow, and it's black, so it's really yeah. hard to tell what's what down there. Um, but I think I'm a close. A lot of take a screenshot, crank the brightness up to yeah. infinity, and see yep. what you see. Yeah, we, we do that a lot. Uh, and there's a couple shots. Um, there's one episode where Quark and Rom are crawling through Jeffrey's tubes doing yeah. something nefarious, no doubt. And they open up a panel back here on the uh, on the left, uh, right back, somewhere back here. Yeah. And they pop out uh, in Cisco's office, and he looks at them like they're crazy, but there's a shot from down there of <laughs> Cisco sitting at his desk, and that was the one that I used the most for figuring out like how, how it like. all worked. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so we, I mean, that's why you have to watch a million episodes, because like, there's no way to know, you know, that random shot in the, the episode that barely even featured ops at all, let alone yeah. Cisco's office, but there it is, yes. that one shot that, that you needed. Need, as you're, yeah. just, you're just casually watching it going, yeah. I don't need anything from this. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah it's great. Just, 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 just. Uh, Andrew Hughes wants to know if Kipley Brown is coming back. Uh, I think yes, definitely. I don't know if we've announced anything for her. I don't, her, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure we will use uh, her character She's again. She's been pretty rad. Yeah, we, we really like Kamarke. Uh, which door goes to the Curland bathroom? Uh, that's probably this one over here. I have to imagine this is Cisco's private bathroom that everyone's waiting for. One would assume uh, one one door or the other. There are four doors outside of uh, or in ops other than the office door itself, and uh, it's hard to see. you can't see it here. Actually, oh, you're on triple, so you can't have two. Um, there is enough room out there behind those two doors, and then also the two doors in the front uh, of ops. For there to be a little hallway back there and yeah. maybe a couple other rooms so there's probably a bathroom or two back there, there um, no we certainly we saw those two doors open at one point as well um or a couple points actually yeah. um i remember the um, i can't remember the name of it now 
episode in season three where the station gets uh, shut down by some Golducott protocol that oh, only scans yeah. for Cardassian life forms or whatever, and he comes in and it's a hologram. Yeah. And Garrick ends up saving the day because he's the only Cardassian on board. He comes yeah. through, Card- or Garrick comes doors. through one of those doors, and so yeah. you can see back there, there's a couple more of those little boxes and, and tubes. Yeah, um, but, but that's, really that's all that's actually there. Because they literally just put like a uh, flat behind yep. here when they shot yep. it, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, people are saying it's called Civil Defense. Civil Defense, that's yeah. the one. That's a great, that was a great episode for reference for ops because there are so many uh, weird shots from people ducking under tables and things. I used a lot of shots from that episode for, for this uh, this build. Oh, that's true. Grand Nagus Rom used to be in waste extractions. So you're probably very familiar <laughs> with the curve in the bathroom. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nick, uh, Tim said, also says that Civil Defense is a great episode for reference yeah. pictures. Yeah. Uh, which is odd for Tim because all the stuff was shut down, so you, might, you wouldn't see many L cars, but... No, the L cars are all still on. It's okay. just like, it was all in red alert mode and oh, yeah. and had force fields up and yeah. I don't remember what else. Uh, will our tunes ever get a static voice for mission dialogues? Uh, probably not. I don't think... Uh, we, we like you guys to be able to you know picture whatever voice you want for the character. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. Um... Are there any other questions here? We've got about eight minutes until the play with the dev begins. Uh, but this is, looks like we have sort of given all of the tour of ops, and it is beautiful. It's not much. I mean, there, it's only one room, right? There's one room in, in the office, so there isn't yeah. a whole lot to tour. Um, but uh, I'm glad that we got it in, and I'm glad that, um, that you guys are enjoying it. So. Yeah. Uh, guys, I'm just to let you know, I don't accept friend requests on stream. Uh, not because I don't like you, just because I don't. Uh, but you want to look at some fan art before you go? Sure. All right, cool. we got some cool fan art this week. Uh, as always, these are screenshots that we've gotten, but you know, you guys can feel free to send us anything. Send us your drawings, send us your uh, fan fiction, and we'll do dramatic readings. We've definitely done that before. Send us videos, anything you want to show. Uh, we like showing off the cool stuff you make. Uh, we showed off some cosplay on the stream before, which if you've, nice. got, uh, if you've got STO cosplay, please send it to us because I love seeing that stuff. We love seeing that, especially at Vegas. Like, oh, yeah. we're down there. The, yeah. There's always a couple people that are, are decked out. It's great. Somebody at, at DST came up in there. Oh, yeah. um, not an Odyssey, the one. With all the... The Sierra. Know, maybe the Sierra, yeah. yeah. I said the one with all the... You knew it was well, the Sierra. <laughs> well, Sierra, the Sierra is, like, the most common, I think, other than... The, well, actually, it might be more common than the Odyssey, even, because the Odyssey was only a couple of years ago that we uh, set that standard, so... Yeah. Uh, we should have the replicator randomly spawn one of those uh, phaser drones from Civil Defense that had everyone ducking. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's we should... It'd be great to just have a Cardassian lockdown event every once in a while. That, that would that be plays fun. On. <laughs> Cause we, we, we've talked about, you know, uh, and, uh, how uh, our accidental uh, curling fight that happened in yeah, the Fools right. this year uh, let us think maybe there be, could be more fun to be had with yeah. uh, combat and social zones. So maybe I'll, maybe we can push that uh, for later on in the year. Uh, anyway, all right. So this first one is from Alistair Morden. I doubt that's his real name, but it might be. Uh, Perhaps. Yeah. Um, so he, sent, nice uh, he sent us probably about 30... N- was it him yet? No, no, no. This is not. He only sent us two. Um, so these are these are both really cool. Only two. <laughs> Get on it, Alistair Morton. Uh, and this ship, which I always like and can never remember the name of. Uh, that's well, an Akira variant. I can't remember if it's Akira the Alita variant. or the Armageddon or the something something. Yeah. Uh, some so a, some A word, no doubt. Uh, Tim says it was the old Lifetimer Admiral uniform, so it wasn't. Oh, okay. Sierra. You're wrong about everything. I'm. I. Yep. That's generally the case. <laughs> Uh, all right, and then this is from Admiral Brown, who did send us about thirty pictures. I picked three that I liked because <laughs> I didn't. Uh, we didn't want to, want to be showing them for the next hour, but these are all really cool. More space dock. This is space dock. This is more space dock with the, an Odyssey class, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then this is a really cool shot of the Odyssey flying towards nice. the Lucari dying star. Yep. And then one of my favorite screenshotters, Resdane, decided to send us a bunch of stuff for uh, the Declare Your Allegiance campaign we've been doing. Uh, we nice. Awesome <laughs> one of the Federation all saluting. Cool. And uh, some, yeah. of the, some of the cooler ships flying together. I think this is a pl- in in game meetup that they then yeah. turned into these amazing screenshots, yeah. which is super cool. I love I the s- looks of the discoveries on the other end here, mm-hmm. with the shield effects. Uh, and yeah, okay, I saw I saw screenshots of this yeah. meetup. That's yeah, yeah, pretty cool. That's super cool. And then finally. Yeah, I love and this is like I think everybody together again. So yeah. They, yeah, people have been doing really meetups every week uh, for the different factions for Declare Your Allegiance, which I didn't really uh, cool. plan at all, and it's been really cool to see the screenshots from. So yeah. keep doing stuff like that. It's amazing, guys. Uh, show off the Borg thing Dano did. I don't know what the Borg thing Dano did is, <laughs> so you got to send me stuff. Uh, SFC 100, will you be showing the winning posters on stream? Uh, probably. Uh, the, for those of you who don't know, we're having a... Uh, 
Uh, we're sending out another reminder tomorrow because it's the last day. But we're having a uh, propaganda poster contest for the Faction Allegiance thing. You know, send us your favorite, you know, nice. join the Empire. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, kind of things. Um, and we've got, I'm getting some really, really great entries. Uh, the contest ends on Friday, so you've got a little bit longer to do it. Um, this week is our final week of Declare Your Allegiance. It's Dominion Week. So, yeah, uh, yeah send us cool stuff. Nick, thanks for joining us. So always. Go on, head thanks, downstairs. Guys. You'll see him online again in a second because he's going to be playing with you guys, I think, right? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I, there's okay. a lot of stuff to get done. That's fine. Well. I totally understand. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll see you guys around. All right. Well, now it's just us. Just you and me. Lies! <laughs> hey, guys. I have been meaning to tell you. No, it's just, just us. All right. Hold on. Rami has sent me the thing she wanted me to, to shen, send. Uh, Horian, I don't have that on me, but it's on Twitter. Um, we, we retweeted some awesome uh, fan art recently. Uh, that was of Data in an Odyssey uniform. Oh, that one. Um, Rami, that's part of the Factor Allegiance contest, so if it, if it wins, we'll show it off. All right, cool. Uh, Captain Senti will be showing off all the posters. Maybe, actually. Um, oh, if we haven't gotten thousands, which I don't think we have, I might make a gallery uh, in the blog where we announce the winners, it goes through which ones uh, are which. Uh, we're on trouble. So for those of you who don't know, uh, we're going to be doing a play with the devs uh, right now, um, starting in about three minutes. Uh, so um, hop onto your triple account if you've got one. Uh, if you don't got one, Google how to make it and hop on and uh, head to the Gamma Quadrant. Um, we're going to start playing through some of the uh, Gamma Quadrant battle zone cues, uh, seeing if we can spawn the boss, all that stuff. Uh, so it'll be fun. I'm gonna go out to sector space. Rami, what are you doing? Why are you logging on and off? Uh, Chaos by design, I will pass that on. That sounds like not a thing that should be happening. Joe Brooks, I got you, bro. Uh, I'll talk to somebody about uh, the TOS uh, animation time. All right, we're taking a warm hold of the Gamma Quadrant. Uh, I'm going to briefly send out an email uh, to everyone on the team, so you're going to be watching me go on my phone for a second. I know that it's exciting and riveting television. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, dev team. And for those of you who are interested, yes, this is definitely something we're doing to get feedback. Uh, so hop onto the battle zone and we will play around. Um, we're going to run some of these things and then we're definitely going to watch your feedback afterwards. So I'll be posting on Twitter uh, the official feedback thread. Please, please, please send us uh, your thoughts, uh, things you found, stuff like that. Sent. Now the hurricane invasion is going to reset in a minute and 20 seconds, so you just got time. Uh, Rami, that's terrifying. Please don't do anything weird. Uh, Chaos by Design, uh, you submit them by emailing me at ambassadorcal at gmail.com. Uh, Tater, well, have a good night, man. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, the boss apparently spawned not too long ago. So uh, there's going to be people who are just going to be jumping on uh, who are developers, um, stuff like that. Let's see how many instances we got. Just one so far. Uh, so uh, basically the way we're going to do this is you're just going to be able to play the different sectors. And, uh, uh, you know, if you end up with a, in a match with one of us, you end up in a match with one of us. And I'll be playing the ones that I'm playing live on the stream. Do Rami stop logging off? This is weird. Just stay in the game. All right, 16, 15, 14, 13. You want to do a countdown together? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And here we go. The battle zone is back online. Okay, there we go. Battle zone is back online. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not seeing here. You have to pull up the map again to see where we go. Maybe you have to go to the battle zone briefing. Oop. Okay, well, I joined the queue for planetary assaults. I guess that's what I'm doing first. Okay, here we are. Uh, so, yeah, let's do it. 
Join some cues, guys. Let's go beat up some Herc. Uh, Curtis Simpkins. Uh, yes, you can play the original series, characters, and new Trek stuff. Everything we make, you can play. It's very exciting. <laughs> the playable changeling guy has a ship named Playable Changeling, please. I, I appreciate you. There we go. Here we go. Uh, kudos to the dev who made the buttons for the battle zone. I think that was Thomas. He's, he's doing most of the UI stuff, but it may have been Addison, uh, who is our UI artist. All right, so there's three lanes. We gotta defend the lanes. We gotta defend the ships in the lanes. And I gotta launch my fighters. It's maybe one of my last weeks playing this ship. I love this ship, but I'm definitely gonna get the uh, Jem'Hadar carrier and play all the pets. Uh, Figamus, it, it does mean there is a chance for Temporal Agent to return down the road, but it doesn't necessarily mean Temporal Agent will return down the road. Uh, Delta Recruit was the start of something. I don't know if we'll actually do Temporal Agent again or not. That thing is fast! Holy crap! I was not expecting that. Last time I played this, they were not that quick. Alright, let's blow up these things. All we gotta do is prevent the structure from getting blown up. And there's a lot of hurt coming in to try and make that happen. Oh shit, all my fighters are dead. And it's war on the stream. Bad times all around. <laughs> uh, troop to whoop, yeah, the carrier ship with the wingman thing. I wanna, I wanna fly that guy and get um, all of the pets I possibly can coming out of it. Uh, I'm going to see if I can be a true summoner in this game. I think it'll be really fun. I need more mines. I need zero mines. I we used mines for a long time in this game. I, I was always under the assumption they were pretty cool, but I like my cannon build now, which is not a cannon build. It's just a cannon build. You know what I mean? That's awesome, Alt Lexington. I, uh, I've created a Delta Recruit. I created my first Romulan as a Delta Recruit, but I haven't had any time to play her, um, which has made me sad. Because I hear the Romulan missions are real good, and I really liked the uh, tutorial when I played it. It was very fun. Uh, yes, this is a rainbow boot. Uh, rainbow build. Uh, Mogable, that sounds awesome. We should play together sometime and summon all the ships. Uh, I've got a point to punch platform to deal with these things, but when I switched to triple, it moved all my characters around, so it's hard. But I'll save my fellow Jem'Hadar and then get back in the fight. Oh, Captain B-Money. I, I was wondering if that was somebody I knew. Excellent. We're doing great, guys. Keep it up. Two more minutes. Haven't lost a single habitat yet, which is awesome. No, no, we haven't jinxed it. Everything's fine. Uh, just passing all this stuff. Triple. Beta's just getting a little beat up, but it's fine. Ah, ships. Need lots of ships. Mm -hmm. 
trying to focus on taking out. Why am I stopped? I'm trying to focus on taking out the ships that are closest to the uh, the habitat. Team Beta, don't let that thing fall. I can see it taking a little bit of damage here. If you're a little overwhelmed, let me know. What is the shield thing that pops up in front of my ship? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, that thing. Uh, I actually don't know what that is. It's probably one of the powers I just activated. Maybe it's attack pattern, or um, maybe I have a trait that pops up a shield when I uh, use powers. Words. Oh, boy. I need to use my bonus shields. Oh, here they are. Oh, there's my point defense platform. Let's turn that on. I am definitely buying the uh, Vanguard pack. I, I don't know that I'm going to pre-order it. I may just get it when it goes live. Um, because I'm, you know, on the game all the time anyway. Uh, but you should definitely pre-order. Because then as soon as you get in on Tuesday, you can just get that stuff. All right. Well done, everybody. Let's pull on out of here. There's more There's more planets to save. Uh, Ron... Rondrickzaw says, or Rondrickzaw says it's a tactical initiative. It's what's happening on the front of my ships. That's probably what it is. Curtis Simpkins, thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon, man. All right, we've already done planetary assault, so I gotta head straight up north to uh, break the circle. What time is Victory's Life going live Tuesday? It is going live when maintenance ends. I'm not going to be any more specific than that right now, only because uh, uh, maintenance is, uh, you know, sometimes things happen. And I don't want to be like, well, it's definitely going live at 9 a.m. Because you never know. Uh, Wilson, Kenny, bye. I may, re may I recommend heading to the uh, official forums or our subreddit. Uh, and that'll tell you, that'll help you get friends in the game. Uh, there's lots of people recruiting for fleets all the time in both places. Philip117, I have an idea of who your character is in game now. Also, there's no, like, oh, getting Vanguard. Okay, I understand. <laughs> LR Odious, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, will the maintenance be standard or prolonged version? We hope it'll be standard. The plan is for it to be standard. I know I'm getting here hella early in the morning, just in case. Uh, that's actually a really good idea, Firefly. I'll just pass that on to the team. Uh, Der Terrence Durst, the Vanguard pack, I believe is $130. Someone will tell me if I'm wrong there. All right, we're going in. Uh, Ron Drick's Zow, whatever that is. We haven't renounced the date for Victory's Life on console, but I promise it'll be later this summer. Glitch 83, you're welcome. Uh, Craig, uh, you pretty much hit it on the head. Um, I don't know the exact details, but basically in testing, it wasn't working the way we wanted. And unfortunately, the blog went out because I was on vacation. Um, so... Uh, Personal Endeavors is probably still coming, but not with Victoria's Life. Okay, we got the black hole with this one. So for those of you who don't know how this one works, we've got to, we've got swarms and swarms of uh, uh, Herc ships that we've got to destroy in order to get at the big guy in the middle. Uh, Ranger 9427, maybe. Uh, again, the storyline for the Dominion faction is very Jem'Hadar specific, so having a Breen in there would be a bit weird. We'd have to rewrite, some, rewrite a lot of the dialogue, but you never know. <laughs> Pax Federatica, I can't repeat that on stream, but know that I am amused. Point defense platforms. And as mentioned on... Uh, uh, previous stream with Jesse, all of these uh, these cues in the battle zone are based on classic arcade games. 
Uh, the only one I remember specifically is Sinistar, which is where Sinister Gathering comes from. But uh, and I, uh, Planetary Assault is Space Invaders. This one I've forgotten. Someone will correct me in chat because they already know. Uh, any chance of a count-wide ship mastering in the future? Uh, well, it's happening with the Jem'Hadar, um, and then uh, it's possible we'll bring it to other ships in the future. Again, it's something we've talked about. It's a new feature. If it's pretty popular, um, I can see us working on it, but, you know, not necessarily right this minute. Certainly not with Victory's Life, because that comes out next week. That's not the worst idea, Philip. I like it. Yeah, Craig, exactly. I can kind of see if we did end up doing the um, uh, the account wide on mastery, I can see that being a thing for maybe lockbox ships. Um, it's a question we have to look at. Hello, Jesse. Hello. You decided to narrate instead of playing? Well, I am logged into trouble, but my account is not flagged as a dev. Great. Well, come on in. <laughs> Uh, neither is mine, but I just sort of assumed people would identify themselves in chat. I don't need to identify myself because everyone knows me. And loves you. Of course. Uh, hashtag Kel loves everyone. Hashtag everyone loves Kel. Uh, <laughs> so um, I was tr actually trying to figure it out because I'd forgotten. Which classic arcade game is this one based off of? Uh, which one is this? This, this is, is uh, um, Break the Circle. Break the this circle. is based off of Star Castle. There we go. That's right. Star Castle was the one with the cool LEDs, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not too shabby. No, we did okay. We've actually sort of murdered the first two cues pretty well. But not like it's too easy. Just like, you know, we didn't die. Mm -hmm. uh, when can we print out our crew as action figures? You missed the answer to that earlier. But um, the answer is uh, maybe sometime in the future if the 3D printing that we're doing now uh, does well enough. That would be cool. Yeah, it's something that we've, we've, we've talked about. it. But. Have you talked to people about the personal contribution rewards? Uh, no, I haven't talked to them about it. Oh, please. go ahead and open your overhead map. You see the special UI element there that shows each time you participate in one of these skirmishes, you get bonus personal contribution. So you've completed two so far, so you're going to get the rewards that are at the tier one dot, the first one over, mm -hmm. an extra 90 dilithium and five gamma marks. Ooh, drop in the bucket. But the more you play, the bigger those rewards get, and they so scale up. Level seven reward is a whole crap ton of dilithium. Right. And so this will automatically grant you those rewards when the map flips over to the boss stage or after the boss stage ends and it reverts back to waiting for the Herc to return. Let me see if I can bring up your nameplate so that people aren't like, who is that? Although everyone knows who you are. Mm -hmm. There we go. And back to the game. <laughs> well, that is cool. Uh, no worries, uh, Picard Alpha 2 clearance. That sounds like a, uh, a, yeah, I think that is actually something he said at some point during the show. Clearance Picard Alpha 2. Rami, no. Hashtag Kel loves everyone. Get it right. Uh, can we get long hair to use for male characters that is not a ponytail? Uh, that's a thing to ask the character team, but I, I can see that as a definite maybe. I feel personally called out. You should. You always should. <laughs> Every day you see this majesty, you should feel called out. It's true. <laughs> this is going to be the start of our uh, WWE-like rivalry. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. Actually, with that hair. Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. <laughs> Where's my intro music? <laughs> Uh, um, actually, you may know the answer to this. Ranger9427 has been asking over and over, will we be getting uh, Cardassian buffs uh, in the game? I don't know the answer to that myself. I believe the answer is yes. Okay. Systems team would know for sure, but yeah. I remember asking about that, and I'm pretty sure. Uh, Rip pretty Feeders, sure. yes, this is the full uh, the full Gamma Quadrant. It's about um, half the size. Well, it's the same size as the original Alpha Quadrant, about half the size as the current Alpha Quadrant. Note, this is just what you can get to. There are... <laughs> Other places in the Gamma Quadrant, space is big. Um, so, for instance, the Founder's Homeworld isn't actually on that Gamma Quadrant map. Yeah. But, you know, it has to be in the game for story reasons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Philip117, uh, that is, Philip117 has been holding his own personal protest by creating a character called Let Me Play a Changeling and standing outside of Quarks since DS9 launched. Uh, I hope to one day bring you the satisfaction you require, uh, but until then, keep up your vigil, good citizen. I uh, know that we are with you. I don't know. Something like that. Via con Dios, my son. <laughs> uh, Sir Boulevard wants to know where the Omarian Nebula is. Not on that map. Imagine? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it possible to find this? Not on this map. <laughs> 
Uh, Craig, I do run the Star Trek Online Twitter account. Um, uh, and yes, I, 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 cool. I'm glad I could uh, make you happy about it. Yeah, anything social you see is me. So I saw someone was asking my opinion of Fallout 78, and I feel like that's just so wow because not only do oh, we not you. I uh, seen them get pulled talk about upcoming cool. content, but now someone's asking me to talk about upcoming content for a game that's not even ours. Yeah. I was going to actually start the stream by joking about that we're going to only talk about Fallout 76 this week, and I completely forgot. Oh, oh I like the new Seeker Bomb yeah. uh, effects. That's cool. Really you let know. people know exactly what Work that thing has is Work has happened. Yeah, since the last playtest I did, but there's a lot has changed. Yeah. Wow, we are crushing this thing. Ryan, make it harder. <laughs> he may have to. Yeah. The other two took... You know, like five or ten minutes. This one looks like we're gonna You're just, just massacre this board. Mashing thing. him. Nice. Nothing's... Oh, he's he's getting rebuilt though. And there's random. I don't even know what the heck what that is, is that? about. <laughs> All right, gonna give it some more asteroids. BRB. There's another one over here. What have you done, Jesse? You're still in red alert. Yeah, I know. Where's my? This is my engines. No, that's my guns. That's your guns. Where's, oh, because I'm on my triple character, so I don't have the engines mm -hmm. thing pulled up. Uh, fire everything! You're firing against the ship behind you? Who told you to do that? Point defense platform. Destroy all those things. Ooh, a bunch of crystals. <laughs> My. This is, of course, Sinistar. Yep. Which is the best name of any arcade game ever. Uh, I hunger. Um... <laughs> Picard out the two clear and says, Don't make it harder. I haven't upgraded my gear. Neither have I, man. Neither have I. All right, let's pick up these asteroids. Make them spin into my ship. Uh, any updates on Star Wars Episode Nine? Uh, it is a movie that someone is making, and I am not that person. <laughs> Those are the updates. Those are all the updates. <laughs> Going in for your final attack run. Yes. Probably getting shot in the butt. I can't shake it. I'll just put some put put, put all flat power to rear deflectors. Uh -huh. Or it's gonna get just get beat up in chat for this one. <laughs> Almost there. Looks like we'll close it up and I can fire one of these things now. We'll see. There it goes. There's no hurt between me and the target. Oh, Ryan says he's too busy to make things harder. <laughs> Where did he say that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan, just flip the harder switch. God. Yeah. Don't you know how things work in MMOs? Just flip the switch that makes the thing go. Oh, you're so close. Uh, boom! Not quite boom. One more. One more. Someone get the last bomb in there. Oh god, I need to get my ships up. <laughs> I am fully surrounded by her ships right now. <laughs> but I'm going to ignore them and go for these asteroids. Oh, we got it. Okay, cool. Hooray! Go us! Ooh, I got a new, uh, a new point. I have to level 62. Fighting a space rock? Someone call the USS Paper for help. I like that. <laughs> Very nice. Uh... Uh, yeah. I almost answered a question I got on Facebook Messenger from one of my mods who specifically said, I'm not answering this, watching the stream on the stream, which he would not then have seen it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll do Sinister Gathering again. Uh, what social zones are there in the Gamma Quadrant? Um, I think there's actually just Deep Space Nine as far as X4 social zones Yeah, go. basically the, the choice was we could try to make an entirely new social zone, like <laughs> making the Founders' homeworld into a social zone, which would be really weird. Lots yeah. of yogurt and jello sort of <laughs> themes. Um, or we could revamp DS9 and make it totally awesome, yeah. and we chose the latter. Yeah. Uh, MGMK, uh, sorry that you're having that issue with... Um, uh, having us be so quiet on the stream. Um, I haven't heard from a lot of other people, so it might be an issue with your audio setup, but let me know. Let's see. Uh, Andrew Hughes. Yes, as far as we, we know from things we've heard, there are two more Trek, Trek films currently in the being made category. There's the next one in the um, uh, Kelvin timeline, and then there's the whatever Tarantino's film turns out to be. But we don't know anything about that. They don't tell us that stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Philip 117 says he'd be cool with Jello Planet, so I guess we have to do a Jello Planet now. Okay, you say so. <laughs> I love this this whole UI. Yeah, thing. Thomas did a great treatment of just like a very simple. Here's what you are doing. Yeah. I just love the fact that the battle zone stuff is really quick. Just fly in, do some stuff for a few minutes, fly out. And you you've can gotten some rewards, or you can stay there all day. It's right. two seven. Yeah, you can you can play a little bit. You can play a lot. Um, you, whatever your schedule looks like, it's completely supported. Yeah. And of course, all of these scale to different team sizes. So if you're on at three a.m. and nobody else is in the gamma quadrant, you can solo these. Yeah. Or if you're on it, I don't know. I, I, I had a joke in my head, and then it went away, and I started to say it, which is, you know, mm -hmm. how my life usually goes. Brilliant. Blocked by my mind. I don't see the ship this time. Oh, there he is. Yeah. I was like, last time, he was so obvious. Oh, but so slow. We, yep. we were doing play tests, and people were firing secret bombs or moving at full impulse, and then I'm like, was my bomb firing? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to impact with that asteroid. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Oh, well, no, no. No, it's going to no. dismiss. It's going to dismiss. Oh, Boom. curved around it. Boom. Nice. Well done, Secret Bomb. Man, I, this is just the mission where I get shot in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> that is what this mission is. That's the Herx thing. Oh, yeah. um, Matt Campbell just decided, Herc, they shoot you in the butt. Yeah. Point defense uh, is real good for those guys. Right. It does explain why the Zenkethi have really strong rear shields, though. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Since that is their thing. Mm. Yes, it's almost like we planned it. <laughs> Orangeita says, mmm, Jello accidentally drinks some founders. Ooh. <laughs> That's bad. Oh. Gem that, 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 then the Jem'Hadar create little tiny ships to fly into <laughs> you to save their gods. <laughs> no link, no link. <laughs> uh. That's a big explosion I just flew into. It's all right. I'm fine. Everyone stop panicking. Just don't look behind you. It'll yeah. be fine. Uh, Justin Green, um, on console currently, all bridges are just the bridge. There aren't, aren't other quarters and stuff. It's something that we are going to fix, I promise, hopefully someday. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's not something that we fixed anytime recently. Um, it's, it's because of basically how uh, if you swoop in... Oh, now you're never getting playable change links. Now that's this is oh I could okay. <laughs> he was already full. All right, good. good he just good. trolled you. <laughs> Stupid people with their fast ships. Mm, space trolling. Space trolling. Uh, World of None, the energy nullifier mechanic. It creates an enemy in space who doesn't threaten you, just takes your targeting, uh, and is generally annoying about it. Basically, when you are using fire at will or torpedo spread, you're going to wind up hitting a bunch of the energy nullifiers. They're just going to suck it up. Yeah. Oops, that one missed. I have failed. I'll have to present myself to... Wait, I'm playing Klingon. Never mind. Mm. <laughs> You're going the wrong way! <laughs> Almost there. Almost there. Yeah. Boom. Well, yeah. Okay, one more. This time, I shall finish it. There it is. Done. Kaboom! Nicely done. Yeah. Uh, World of Nuns is a great way to challenge a typical beam fire will player. Uh, I agree. And it's one of the things that's, one of the things the system team is always looking at is um, how can we create content not to frustrate players who have a certain way of playing, but just to encourage them to discover different tactics within the game. You guys are making fast progress. Yeah, we are. And you're Too getting endeavor fast. progress. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Salaknar 1990 says stay on topic. About what? Uh, Horian, you missed the Fallout 76 discussion. It happened already. It's over now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Artemis X, any plans to show the Gemini Carrier in this? No, because we showed it, we showed it in the last stream, I think, or two streams ago. That's on YouTube right now. Um, but uh, I don't have it on this character, so um, I want to make sure I'm flying a good character who's set up correctly uh, to uh, face these different cues and help. Ragnat says I'm not blowing up enough. I know, it's because I'm decent at this game now. I might even go as far to say, not bad. <laughs> glory to your and your house. Yes. Very, very small glory. 
<laughs> yes, a little bit of glory. Yes. <laughs> four inch glory. I don't have ships anymore. I was going to hold up one of the four inch ships. Right. Like, four inch glory. To you your can house. you can trade in ten of these for one glory. <laughs> <laughs> you can open the glory lockbox. Sorry. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I would actually love to do a, a, a comedy mission about um, uh, Klingons attempting to adjust to capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we saw Klingons plus Ferengi. Yeah. House Grilka, House Quark. Uh, Ragnats, welcome to my map. <laughs> Philip just just uh, just said no, please. I didn't mean to take the crystals. Don't take my playable changelings away. <laughs> but I will. I must. I must. Now they won't launch with victory as life. They were never going to launch with victory as life. <laughs> Just want to make sure I put that out there so that uh, nobody's like, oh my god, Kel actually took away features of the game. Uh, people want to get you a SAG card so you can narrate the game. <laughs> hmm. So I would have to participate in three SAG eligible projects, and then I would have to pay a bunch of money or get Taft Hartley in. <laughs> I don't know Taft Hartley. Oh, God, I'm about to explode. Lucari, Taft, save me. Taft Hartley Act basically is a... Uh, it's a way to sort of get shoehorned into your SAG card oh, that gotcha. uh, offloads the costs onto the production company. Oh, okay. Which is nice because the t cost for SAG membership has gone way, way up yeah. from five, ten years ago. I got... Um, I used to, when I did student films, get some SAG actors in there every now and then and just fill out the tons of paperwork to be uh -huh. like, they're in my film, but I promise I'm not paying them. <laughs> I promise you I would not pay them if I could. No, wait, hang on. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> Almost there, and kaboom. kaboom! I will take this reward. Thank you very much. Uh, any chance of Cardassian ground equipment being added or traditional Cardassian uniforms for the tailor? I think there's chances for both of those. Um, I don't know if either of them are launching for Victory is Life. I've had a lot of requests for that Cardassian uniform. Uh, and I don't remember if that actually got major Victory is Life or not. That's some, that's some good warp out that I did right there. Yeah, something going on with your warp engine. Uh, will we be oh, able to oh, also oh, create oh, a Jem'Hadar oh, Federation oh, character? Oh, kind oh. of. At the end of your first Jem'Hadar mission, you can swear allegiance to the Federation, and then you can play all the Federation missions as a Federation person. Basically, like the your your handler says, so pick a side so that we can have you as our agent on the inside who knows what's going on with this team. Yeah. You should spend your spec. Uh, which specializations do I run now? Uh, I am running, I believe, Pilot... And some other skills. Pilot and strategist is what I went with. I don't know if those are good. I just kind of picked them because they seemed like they fit my playstyle. Pilot's rad. Pilot is totally rad. Uh, Grant Lawrence, yes, we are working on that. Uh, and I'm sorry that you've had to deal with it for so long. The team is crunching away and trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, Ragnats, that pun. Oh, it's Ryan, of course. All right, so we've unlocked Sinister Gathering. We gotta do Planetary Assault and break the cycle, guys. Let's do it. We got this. It's <laughs> my battle cry. <laughs> 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 this is a somewhat untraditional Klingon battle cry. Yeah. Uh, Horion, no, we are not ready to explain that because I don't know the answer. Uh, I was talking to Jesse about this months ago, uh, but it's it's an upcoming content thing anyway. But um, how? We're explaining how Jem'Hadar can then go back and play all the old missions. Um, there's there's an in-story explanation for that. I made sure there was. I told Jesse I'd beat him about the head and shoulders if there wasn't. But uh, we can't talk about it because it's, uh, it's upcoming content. But I'm going to ask you about that after the stream. Remind me. Sure. <laughs> Next week's stream, me getting beaten about the shoulders and the head. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Oh, yeah, people are waiting for, the, for their first Gem Hadar in the hologram team, which, yep, I'm going to wait to see that, and their first Gem Hodor, which I hadn't thought of yet. Mm. That's a good one. Well, we, we had that, that list of all the great Gem Hadar names, like yeah. Jim Hadar or, you know... Rick Hossa. Yeah. That was a good one. I liked it. Ayata Flan. 
Uh, Sir Boulevard asked me if I'm allowed to threaten my GM, uh, only when I'm not playing. Obviously, when we're playing the game, I would never threaten Jesse because then my character might have horrible things to follow him. But I mean, I know, horrible things are going to follow your character anyway. That's true. <laughs> I, know, I know that he has a short enough memory that he will forget this tomorrow. What? <laughs> Where are we? Who are you? <laughs> Why am I in this boat? <laughs> oh, Jenny's boat. Uh, Philip1717, I said good jump in our names. Uh, when are we going to get an Anbo Jutsu melee spec for melee spec for tactical officers? I don't know. That would be upcoming content. Yeah. Uh, I have asked for the Anbo Jutsu outfit. Um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, somebody said uh, Jean Luc. Well, they said Jean Luc Jim Hadar, but I think Jean Luc Hadar works better. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Jean Luc Hadar, the USS Enterprise. All right, I defended Alpha last time, so right. we're going to go over to Gamma. Are you going to have the gem battleship from the show playable? Uh, I cannot talk about that one way or another yet. Activate all the bridge officer powers. Fire all the things. Then find yourself knocked out of range and have wasted the ball. <laughs> yeah. Good thing you didn't use your emergency power to weapons. So you can do that now. No, that one. That one. There we go. <laughs> Gem Bon Jovi. Oh, that's a good one. That's pretty good. That's, that's really good. I like it. Mm -hmm. I liked Gem Hadar too. Gem Harder. Uh, yeah, that was good. Um, um, Molag Ball Kane Vakan. I'm so sorry if that's your real name and how badly I did that. Uh, if the stream is getting pixelated, that probably is your connection speed, but uh, it might be Facebook. Uh, if so, I apologize. There's very little I can do from here, unfortunately. Uh, Ron Drickzaw, um, we do have key sales a lot. You can look for that if you want cheaper keys. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I'm not going to feel too bad about you spending money on your child instead of my game. I just... I don't feel that bad about that. <laughs> As someone with a new infant. Yes, priorities. <laughs> we love for you to spend money on Star Trek Online, but also take care of your family. Uh, apparently I was close on the name. Excellent. Uh, we got Germ Herder. Oh, you finished like the that. Endeavor. Hooray. All right, cool. We'll get to pick up that package soon. That's what she said. Oh. Where am I? Okay. Yeah, you're, so you're getting a breather. Next wave is coming down the pipe. Oh, geez, Alpha's getting rocked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. They're just Dominion citizens. <laughs> yeah. Are there really citizens of the Dominion? Well, Isn't there's... it just subordinates of the Dominion? Yeah, there's people who are going to get rocked by Herc <laughs> if they do, do what the Dominion says. Yeah. <laughs> Cryptic should sponsor a key holder's amount on this meeting. Oh, mm. that's, that's an interesting... What happened there? I don't know. We should talk to FX about that. Yeah. Jem Hod Arg, the pirate. It's a little bit of a stretch, but I'll take it. Yep. Ooh, game is getting beat up because I went too far away. <laughs> I was like, what is that ship that just warped in? Oh, it's mine. Because <laughs> I have that discovery power that we added, which is great. <laughs> oh, sweet. Thanks, Yonner. So I've been I've been playing, so I haven't been uh Looking at that. Um, uh, Logan Cameron, um, I think that uh, newer starter ships get higher level gear than Mark, at Mark 10, but I don't remember that for sure. That would be a systems question. The Jim Hadar? Uh, well, I think just he was saying that you know when you, when you buy a tier 6 ship, it gets Mark 10 gear and it's not good enough to really play the game. Mm. Um, don't have that much information one way or the other. Why did I use my massive healing power when I was at 99% health, Jesse? Why didn't you stop me from doing that? You should have grabbed my hand and been like, Mike, what are you doing? All right, that's coming. Oh, God. <laughs> what door have I opened? <laughs> <laughs> you know that you open that door, I'm going to come barreling through it like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. Oh, oh, the apprentice tailor in Garrick's shop, Hem Jadar. Oh, oh. That's a good one. That's oh, a real good one. Oh, that's many-leveled. I like Kukulin, that. Well done. 
Yes. Uh, so, um, Sir Boulevard, that actually isn't the Jesse question, but I'll pass it on anyway. He wants to know why the starter Jem'Hadar ship doesn't come with the space Jem'Hadar set, but that is a systems question. Yeah, uh, that's more of a question for one of the guys that actually built out the ships yeah. and the Jem'Hadar starting experience. Part of the, the difficulty, of course, with starter ship gear is that it has to be aspirational. It has to be enough to carry you, but not so good that you don't want better stuff. Right. Aren't driven to go and do missions and things. Yeah. Um, somebody said, said the sleepiest Gem Hadar, uh, Pajema Hadar. It's pretty good. Pajem. Uh, Aaron Bass says. Oh, Pajema. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of Pajem, the Vulcan right. Monastery. All right, so somebody somebody told me to turn mm. on my auto fire torpedoes, and that, uh, but they said they said my name was J Thomas Baroni, which I don't understand because there's no way they would think my name was Thomas Baroni based on anything. That's on I don't think right you now. have torpedoes. No, that's the other part of it that's odd. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> hey, you leveled up. You got oh. a, you got a level up reward. <laughs> oh, all right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you made level sixty two, so you get a specialization training manual, so you can train one of your boffs in pilot or command or whatever. Nice. I'll have to grab that later. Alright, so the only thing we need to finish this planetary assault, so we're going to do another. One more. Let's get this boss in here. Make a skinny one named Slim Jim. <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim. Yeah. I actually wouldn't mind seeing Macho Man Jim Hadar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, brother. Gotta serve the founders. Well, we've reached the part of the game, the stream where we sit silently and stare at each other. Is it 20 minutes before the hour? <laughs> Just it about. It is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, once again, if you were playing in the battle zone with us, thank you very much for helping us test this out and for, uh, I hope you're having fun playing with the, the developers. Uh, we are going to be putting a link, um, social media, the forums, Reddit, everywhere you might go to check our stuff uh, for you to follow up and give us any feedback you might have had, any bugs you might have found. Um, please, please do do that. Uh, we had fun playing, but also it'll make the thing better when it launches if you give us, if you let us know what you found and what you liked and what you didn't like. Ooh. If we don't know if it's broke, we can't fix it. Yep, that's always a thing. A uh, gem Hadar with an inventory like mine, a gem Hordar. <laughs> Adrian Owen says, high yield torpedoes are armed and ready, Captain, so I can only assume they're in my instance. Uh, well done. Prepare all to fire immediately. Go defend Beta this time, I think. It's the only one I haven't defended yet. Mm -hmm. Ryan, we already said Gem had R2, Gem Harder on the stream, so you have failed in comedy and must go back to your desk where you are. You must stay exactly where you are. <laughs> I love that you're rainbow boating, too. Oh, yeah. I just Originally, this character was all one type of damage. I think it was Polaron, and then mm. the Discovery thing came out, and so I just got a bunch of different Disruptor damage. So it's all Disruptor. It's just different types of Disruptors. Nice. Yeah. The things that I had lying around my inventory. <laughs> run, Glory Hole, run! Whoa! <laughs> That's the name of the ship. Ooh. That's the name. We'll probably have to talk to the sensor, sensor people about that. Yeah. Oh no, the boss fight is starting as I jumped into this. Oh no. Well, we'll That's fine. It, we'll get through this quick. The boss phase lasts for 15 minutes. You will have time. Yeah. All right, beta is clear. I have done my duty. And you can always ditch out if you want. That's true. I could be a dirty lever. Yeah. Oh god, here they come. <laughs> they come in so quickly. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to back up. Activate my powers. A question for you, uh, you super ship build nerds here. I know that I should be using both um, beta, uh, whatever they're called, um, attack pattern beta, attack pattern omega, but I actually don't know what the difference is. Or what situation is better for which one. So fill me, fill me in on that one. Come on, nerds, now is your time. Uh, Ray, uh, Vamp Vampire says we were wrong. It's actually uh, not rainbow boating, but just rain boating. <laughs> okay. I like that. Oh, someone wants He'll to make one you wearing famous. red and black gem pool. Uh. Uh, Alex Mool says or beta replies, re applies resistance debuff, because that'd be good against the bigger arc. Mm -hmm. 
Omega is good for breaking tractor lock. Oh boy! That's a place that I certainly spawned. Ho ho ho! <laughs> Fortunately, they have realized that you are not actually a threat. <laughs> uh. Go directly to uh, Grenthor, sir. Do not pass go. <laughs> so attack pattern beta will put a, a damage resistance debuff on, an, on whatever enemy you're currently attacking. So it's great against anything. You just should have that up all the time if you can. Okay. Um, attack pattern omega is a maneuverability buff. So that's you get tractor beamed or you suddenly need to turn around and your evasive maneuvers is still on cooldown or whatnot. Um, they have a shared global cooldown because they're both attack patterns. So if yeah. you use one, it's going to lock out the other one for a little while. Okay. Um, so use beta more often. Use omega in specialized yeah, situations. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. I'm flying, flying through so many explosions right yeah. now. Let me Kinda just turn on proto matter. Uh, I was going to say use one of your engineering teams. You got two of them there. These guys? No. The. Oh, these guys. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know that as the like one that looks like a ship that heals me. Yes, that is your ship healer. Who is flying around and healing me right now? Is that one of the powers I activated? Uh, Let's do one of the powers I, I activated. Know. Oops, I clicked on my guy when I didn't need to. Oh well. Somebody said ditch one and get chemocyte. I don't know what chemocyte is, but that sounds cool. Uh, chemocyte is a tactical power that adds chemocyte lace explosions to your weapons so oh, nice. it really increases your damage output comes in three levels chemocyte one two and three you can buy it off of the exchange it's a little bit pricey or you can get it from lock boxes um it's a really good power i use that one as well so obviously combining beta and chemocyte you debuff their damage resistance and, and then, then you, you add extra, extra damage. damage yeah it's just good for melting faces yeah you do that plus um emergency power to weapons at the same time because having really high weapons power increases your damage output as well and you will just rip through things. Good to know. Yeah. Oh man, I am getting so much more beat up this time than I was before. Mm. Come on other players, why aren't you carrying him? <laughs> right? Save me! Must be playing with other devs. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Nope, all my cool healing powers are down. They're in cool down. Oh. It's over! <laughs> in 30 seconds. We're still winning. That's all that matters. Not my multiple deaths. Don't focus on them. Uh, emergency card weapons apparently also works. Alex Mull is giving me a whole class right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, with a trait from the Arbiter as well, giving me a firing cycling speed on top of the damage increase. Ooh, that sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have the dev magic to just give myself these things. Made it. Oh, there was rock and roll. See, you should have hit evasive maneuvers rock and roll when you were getting steamrollered there. And then just gotten out of dodge. Right. It would just be like, I'm going to run away. For four seconds, I'm going to be invulnerable while I'm doing my rock and roll. And then by the time that's over, I'm outside of 10 kilometers and they can't shoot me. That's good to know. I'll yeah. think about that next time. All right, let's fight a boss. Battle zone final alert. Assault. Final assault. Dun, dun, dun. Battle zone alert, final assault sounds like a great video game. I would definitely have bought that in 1995. <laughs> I wonder what the box cover looks like. Yeah. Dude, do I, do I smell some fan art? <laughs> yes, yeah, someone make us box cover art for Battle zone alert, final assault. It came out for the uh, Commodore 64, I'm going to say. Ooh, in 95? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know old computer systems. <laughs> it came out on the Imagination Network. Right. There's a Deep Cuts reference. Uh, I don't no, know if anybody ever played that but me. 95, I had just gotten my 386. I okay. was working on... Uh, I was working on the beginnings of my computer science degree, and then the next year I was using the 386 to work on Fallout. I'm getting complaints about my phone buzzing, so... Your right. phone. Yeah. So what do we, actually, I don't... So you are doing everything now. There's okay. giant swarms of Herc, and there's a mothership that is defended by a huge swarm and also has to be destroyed with Seeker Bombs. And the Seeker Bombs will impact the swarm that's surrounding the mothership. So, so you, you have, have to, to clear space, there. get the bombs out there, and you have dudes shooting you in the butt at the same time. Someone says, this looks great. Now take those mechanics and redo the Zen Kathy Battle Zone with it. <sighs> All right, let's mess up some Hercs. Oh, 
Well, I wasn't in range, so maybe that wasn't the best choice. Now, mess up some Harkses. You're targeting a swarm that's out of range. Target some of the dudes in front of you. But they're not swarms. We need to kill the swarms. I know. There's some swarms kill over here. all the things. I will kill whatever things I so choose. You can't tell me what to kill. Tractor beamed. Use the Omega to get out of it. There we go. Oh! Now I will teleport be behind taught. the swarm! That's a lot Didn't of tractor Didn't see that beams. coming? Oh boy. They saw that coming. <laughs> Do not teleport behind the swarm. Uh, can console get a detailed battle statistics? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, so probably yes, but I, I don't know what you mean. Oh, you keep your secret bombs when you die. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, Andy. there are a lot of Herc over here. <laughs> There's a lot of Herc on this map. Yeah, it is a boss fight. I feel like you should have boss fight music. Someone, someone sing me the decisive battle for Final Fantasy VI, also known as the best boss fight music of all the times. Goodbye, swarmers. How dare you? In general, just how dare you? Philip says he's going to stay away from your crystals this time. He doesn't want to endanger his chance for a changeling. Good, good. You're learning. I really want pilot maneuvers on this map. <laughs> mm. I want to just be like charging in and then be able to just back out real quick. Yeah. Dive in, shoot, 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 run away. Jim McGowan says I'm not using my pets as if it was a question of whether I was using them on purpose. I was not using mm. them not using them on purpose. I had forgotten they existed. This happens <laughs> to me sometimes. Uh, you have half of them out. Now I have all of them. Yeah. And they are all dying really quick because that's what these pets are designed to do. They're designed yep. to die quick and explode. Uh, yep. Oh boy. Let's get out of here. Okay, well that animation died, but... Yeah, I noticed that happening lately. Okay, I am targeting this swarm. I don't think I'm targeting. I don't see a swarm in between me. Fire the stinger bomb! Is it gonna make it? Is it gonna make it? I don't know! Uh, it did! I think. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, I wasn't watching the bar. <laughs> well, I don't have... Oh, I do have we'll catch it on instant replay. <laughs> Evasive maneuvers, too much turn radius. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a spot where having good AoE damage is helpful because you yeah. can blow through the swarms with your B fall, your gravity well, TBR. This build is not designed oh, tonic for, shockwave. Uh, for AoE at all. It's a very one on one ship fight, which is making him not do as well. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the mechanics in these are going to be things that are going to make you consider different builds in order to sort of yeah, which is cool. get an advantage. Of course, some of you outlier performers are like, whatever, my build does everything. <laughs> Fine! <laughs> <laughs> the Herc appear to be very good at uh, defeating my attempts to rock and roll out of dodge. Point defense cannons, do better! Defend me! <laughs> oh god, so many. Perhaps too many. Maybe. Mm. The ship is almost complete. I think we're going to have to fight it. I totally lost track of it. Oh, it's right below me. Mm -hmm. Fire the sinker! Oh, that's going to impact with... Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, I think that hit. Nice. Oh, don't, don't attack the cocoon now, bro. It's completely immune to that. Attack pattern radar. Fire all the things. Oh, oh, that's a good one, Ryan. He says to check out his tank, and then he went three, two, one. Let's jam. <laughs> hey, you can shake off the swarmers by teleporting. Well, Five, sort of. Four, three, two, one. The mothership's well, coming that out. That one was a little too tough. Yep, we get got your, ourselves blown up. Get yourself your pity marks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
The other side load explosive uh, charges in the escape pods and eject them. This is the Gemini <laughs> ship. We just fired our warriors into space with swords. Right. <laughs> all right. I gotta get back to the data mines. All right. Have fun. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Uh, all right, folks. Well, that was fun. Um, please continue to play. I know some devs are gonna play. I gotta go do some work stuff. Um, but uh, we will send you guys some. Uh, we'll send you guys a link. Uh, in to, again, check Facebook, check Twitter, check Reddit, check the forums. I will post a link uh, for where you can post all the feedback, anything you might have found, anything you think we want to do different, anything you really liked. Uh, let us know, and we will uh, uh, we will send that your way. And please feel free to keep playing. Uh, there's more Hark Invasions coming. Uh, all right, but I have to go because I have to do work. So I will see you very soon. Thank you all for joining us. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.